see my photographs as almost like pieces to a jigsaw of life, you know. I mean, I see it's a very small part of a, his a historical kind of overview, but that it's important, those little tiny cheeks, to me anyway. I think we need to reinvent the family album and use it as a historical record of our lives. What I'd like to see a lot more women do is appreciate what, what they do, whatever it is. If I look to my mother's family album and I look, and I look at, and I think about what's, what I feel's missing, then for me, that the things that I would like to have seen is um, her arriving in England, her looking for somewhere to live, um, you know, what, what their washing facilities were when they lived in one room as a whole family, or how all the stuff was set out. Um, because that, that's entirely lost now. When I take photographs, I am trying to validate things not only for myself, but for the people involved often. They, they don't think of what they do as important. And by actually pressing the shutter and positioning them there, I'm saying, look, what, you, what you're doing is important. And it's a society which makes you think that what you're doing isn't important. You can't replace the image. You can't replace the image. Photos are a record because they carry always such a powerful emotional charge. You know, they mean something to people directly. They link in with people's experience or their images of themselves or their desires, how they would like to look and so on. They have very lines of emotional force really cross photographs and the way we read them. And I just think if you tried to write the history of black migration to this country since the war, without the support of those more subjective, more personal histories, you'd get a very funny picture. We, f we find old photographs fascinating because we feel we're in some sort of contact with an event or a person in the past. I think they make a very important contribution as evidence, partly because they seem to speak to people directly. They're very specific. They're about a particular person that you can identify with. They're not a statistic, and they're incontrovertible at a certain level, at the surface level. There is the woman doing the job. I was a nurse in the American Army and uh, was first stationed in Ireland, then England, then moved on to France. You just have to, to act silly and to make jokes of things because war is so dreadful. Uh, if you uh, stopped to, to think about it, you couldn't have managed, you couldn't have done your job. If it was anybody's birthday or if life just was too awful for us. He said, come on, well, let's have a party. And we would get all dressed up and made up and so forth. And I'll just pretend it wasn't all happening. Suffering and death is suffering and death to anybody. And I would never have taken pictures on the ward because those pictures, they don't have to be photographed because they are on your mind anyway. Oddly enough, having said that one only laughed about and acted silly in order to obliterate the, the awfulness of it all, as I look at them, I just remember the fun. So that on the surface it's nice to see all one's old friends and what you were doing, but there's no doubt that at the same time as you look at it, you, in a sense, you almost want to tear them up and throw it away, because you know what it was really about.
memory is not enough in that uh, I think it grows old as well. Not just the body grows old, I think the memory grows old as well. You don't remember so many things. And uh, your vision of it is distorted because you think it was like that. If you then see the photograph, it then reminds you that it wasn't really like that. They're either better looking or they don't look as nice or it wasn't really like that. And so I feel that pictures are important. The record is what is important. We have our photographs of how we came to England, and then we talk about the process of migration, as if it's something that didn't, we weren't involved in in any way. Uh, but I, I think the photograph just breaks down that, that phony distinction between grand history and our personal lives. Our lives are intercut all the time and shaped by, you know, things outside us. They are so powerfully charged with our feelings about them and our memories. They're so inserted into, into histories that mean a lot to us that they do bring to the surface things which we uh, don't find it easy to speak about until, we're, until they prod us, they prod us into speech. That photograph, that particular photograph, means an achievement. In the early 60s, I went to the church leaders and trying to explain to them how black people were treated and were leaving the conventional church. So when I get to the stage that I can take the pulpit, that I can pass all my local preacher's exam and all the rest of it, and I can take the pulpit and able to share some of my inmost hurts with that congregation, I see that particular picture as an achievement to black society. Having photographs of your early struggle in this society uh, is important in that when you come to write the story, or if anybody ever get around to writing it, there is some kind of picture record of it. And so, I mean, at the time when my husband was taking pictures of places we went to, I didn't realize how important it was. It's only looking back, in retrospect, that one understands how important imagery is. Housing was our main problem. There were ads that read, no Irish, no children. No Irish, no coloreds. No colors, no children, no dogs, and variations of that. So you knew that uh, it was no sense applying. Uh, and all the people who were prepared to let you rooms uh, uh, were prepared to exploit you. When I look at those kind of photos, uh, enabling me to talk with my children and show them things, because sometimes when I try to tell young people about it, uh, they seem to take it as a joke. And one would fish out old pictures and said, look at this. And they can see in the room next to the bed is uh, one of these tall lamp heaters. And on top of it is standing a pressure cooker. And they're saying, what are you doing with that next to the bed? And he said, well, I'm just cooking. Uh, and the warmest place to be is in bed. So you stay in bed. And when you look at pictures now, and you listen to the things that people have to say, it is so completely different. It is so completely different. In that, uh, I've heard uh, Europeans saying, well, they like living tend to a room. That is untrue. I want to know the people that say that, where have they been brought up? Because there were women in this country that had 10 and 15 children as well. And some back-to-back -back houses still exist. Where, I mean, when they're attributing that kind of lifestyle to black people, where are they getting the ideas from?
This is a photograph of me, Oscar, when you went marching down to London. It's really precious to me. It's one of the few frames I had in my camera that I managed to take of the strike. Uh, we went down to meet them when they came to the end of the march, and this is a photo of the last section. They stuck it out at bitter end. And uh, it's an event in family history that we'll never, ever forget. And it's, I'm proud. I'm, I was lucky enough, I'd got about half a dozen frames left in a film in my camera when the strike began. And I felt it important to use these frames on the strike because I knew I'd just got the feeling it was going to be a big part of our family history. And I've put them into the family album and I've mingled them in with my ordinary family photographs because I think it's important that my children should remember what they went through during the strike and uh, what my part and the dad's part was in the strike. Please, reaction, they saw a camera. Terrible. If, if they saw you on a picket line taking photos, quick, get that camera. And you were chased and all efforts were made to get hold of that camera, either destroy it film or the camera was smashed. I haven't got many photographs of the strike. I just hadn't got the money to buy the film. And if I'd been able to have took photos of some of the things I've seen, personally stood there, I'd like to have been able to have said, well, look, look at this. You know, I am telling you the truth. So that, because they just can't comprehend it, they don't believe it. Please don't do that. I've stopped arguing now. I just don't say anything about it, but I know in my own mind because I've still got my mental pictures up here. I just wish I'd got photographic evidence because I know what I've seen, but it's a different matter trying to tell somebody else, especially when all the other media was swamped with an opposite side story. If there's no photograph, no evidence, who can ever say that they ever happened? it's underestimated the power that photography actually has to obliterate things like power relationships and class relationships. When you open up your memories, make sure they come alive. Make sure the colour is clear and sharp. And the whole of the family album and, and popular photography is about universals, that we've all done this and we've all done that. That's what all the publicity is about. And in a sense, if we fall into just doing those things, we could be missing a hell of a lot. There's a way in which we all begin to look the same. And that, that really is a denial of our lives and our realities and our experience because we're not all the same. The world is full of difference. <laughs> They're just huge areas of ordinary existence that blacks don't ever see themselves inside the frame of. But then alongside that, there are the, 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 the troublesome places where we do appear. <laughs> and we appear as trouble. That's one story that people tell about us. Um, then there are the permitted ones, blacks as entertainers, good movers, uh, blacks as sportspersons, good movers, <laughs> good bodies, male and female, etc. Think of somebody who's grown up in this culture, who can only see themselves represented in these very narrow ways that we've talked about. You know? They can't find an image of themselves in any whole range of, of situations which, which are just what being alive is like. Well, I, I think that's horrendous to think of what, how he can now experience. Their own sense of their life is so complex, so rich, so full of tensions and new experiences. And the re photographic record is, you know, so thin, so meager, so restricted, so limited, so inscribed in a particular kind of way. I think identity is always a conversation between what we really are inside and how we are being represented to ourselves. There's always a kind of mirror relationship in it somehow. Yeah, I've got lots of photo albums and I've kept them since I was about 16 or so. And um, 
I mean, they're a complete habit now. They're completely part of my life. I can't imagine not keeping them and taking lots of photos and having it all, having it all there. Even at that early stage, it was about growing up into being a woman and being uncomfortable with that and what, what being a woman meant. And I suppose that's translated to almost how, do I, how am I supposed to look as a lesbian, you know? I mean, which, there's no images that I can... I suppose there's butch, which is the only way that lesbians are supposed to look like. You're not actually supposed to look like a real woman. So, for me, that's still a conflict. I just feel like the family denies that a lot about, you know, my experience and lots of people's experience. And those albums are a sort of question of denying that. If you came down from Mars and went through photographic archives, you would actually think that women did no work, were always shown with children, or else were a completely different sort of women who very often had bare breasts and bare bums, and that was it. That was how they recorded. The number of photographs in the 20th century of women doing serious work, whether at home or outside the home, are actually very few. There are some, and more and more are being rediscovered. But if you, if you set them up against the vast piles of naked women and women as mothers, it would be minute. When we're taking photographs today to try and provide some sort of evidence of the existence of women, for example, in certain roles or, or jobs, we, we often imagine that we're doing it for the first time. The general opinion is that women weren't given cameras to hold and use and were generally only the subject of photographs. But as we look deeper into it, I don't think that's necessarily true. And some early advertising by Kodak actually shows women not only in swimming costumes, but taking photographs and giving one another cameras as presents. There, there are multiple readings of photographs. The problem is this, you're a historian. Yes, you're trying to get at what you think is the objective truth because you're still attached to the notion that history is sort of one true story. And you pick up these photographs and you say, what does it mean? And you try to instill one meaning in it. Yes? Black people were oppressed. And at that moment, you just lost black people were jaunty. <laughs> yes. Well, black people were jaunty. And then are you missing the, you know, black people don't know where to go. This guy who looks, has his hat cocked like he owns... Paddington Station, he's actually going outside, he doesn't know where he's going to spend that night, and he's going up a stair which says, no coloured hair, etc. So, the photograph eventually, when you know really how to read them, they, they document a moment, they, ca they catch a moment, but they're not an objective truth, they're not a finished set of meanings like that, and you just can't hold them still. But I think the old attitude towards personal family albums still persist. We don't think it's very important. They aren't very good photographs. They weren't taken in a very interesting way. We don't see what explosive little documents they are, not only of our own lives, but of the whole experience. And then suddenly when people bring them out and start to talk about them, other people connect with them and they suddenly see that they are part of a, a bigger story. They get echoes and reverberations of other people's memories and so on. And I think this is extremely important because um, Otherwise, we can't challenge the sort of dominant view of black people and their history, which I think has largely been written by and seen by somebody else. In your bottom row, you know, are these collections of apparently personal things which don't mean anything to anybody else, but they're part of that story, and you can see yourself in them at last. You're in the frame. That's what's important. I've also tried to deliberately sort of make a lesbian sort of record as well, to some extent. I mean, had pictures of demonstrations, pictures of sort of um, things that somehow seem about, you know... I mean, I sometimes think this is le young lesbians in the 70s or 80s or whatever. This is sort of my generation that would be quite interesting for people in the future to look at. And I'm involved in this thing called the Hall Carpenter Archive, which is a, a lesbian and gay history archive. You know, being lesbian is, 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 is not how you're supposed to live and not what you're supposed to be and all the rest of it. So 
it's like a sort of it's just a funny sort of acknowledgement, if you like. This very conventional photo album will end up in a lesbian archive, which is a very unconventional place for it to end up, and will be a resource for other lesbians. It won't be a resource for my, you know, future kids or whatever. Though I hope they'll come and see it and stuff. But it'll be for, about another sort of community, I guess. Women are portrayed in a very narrow way by photography, not only by photography, but in all sorts of ways. And I think it's very important that we struggle to, to widen that out. I think it's very important. We are doing it. Lots of women are doing it now. And I think that there's been an explosion in that and that, that there should be plenty of material in the future for historians to look at. It makes me very angry that there are so few pictures of women in the past because you you actually come up against it time and time again uh, a, a friend of mine recently took photographs of women welders uh, in a shipyard and the blokes who were showing her around said oh yes well it, this is a very unusual job for women women don't do it they don't like to do it and she said well, what about during the war? There were lots of women welders. And they said, oh, yes, yes, mm, we'd forgotten that. And it's that forgetting, it's that putting things under the carpet, in the back of the drawer, whatever, that makes me angry. And that's why I think photographic evidence is very important in those cases. I would be very happy if women would take up the cameras more because the family album is usually kept by women and different people contribute to it. But if you like, the whole of the family album is er an erasure of women's work, of how they create and produce and look after and bring up children. Because what we see are the products of their labor. We don't see them doing it. So I would hope that a practice could begin to evolve where women who are taking seriously that they're doing those things and they don't want to hide them, could begin to put them back into the family album because then you begin to develop a kind of historical uh, imagination that there's going to be other people coming who are going to see this. We need to remember where we are now, builds on something which went before. Memory in that sense is a crucial part of action. It's not a passive thing at all. We don't know who we are until we see how we can be represented to ourselves. Uh, and if we don't remember who we are and where we were, you know, we'll do it all over again. We'll repeat history because it has to be remembered in order to be built on. In that sense, photographs are a way of making history, but they're also always a way of moving on, moving on in the right way, not moving on by forgetting something, repressing it, but moving on by, you know, taking it with you, living it through in a new way in relation to the future.